You know, when I hear Christian congregation sing onward Christian soldiers and then also stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross and so on. I say, how little these folks know about warfare. They're singing, but they scarcely know anything at all about the dangers, about the wounds, about the privations, about the sacrifices mm, that are just so normal in warfare. So, when I come to the words of Scripture, which tell us that we are waging a warfare and should not be, therefore, entangled with the affairs of this life. Entangled. That word seems to picture to me something of a person who is fast in the grips of tentacles of an octopus. Now, uh, I really have little idea as to how strong such a grip can be. Um, and how utterly futile it would be to struggle against the mighty tentacles of a huge octopus. Well, entangled again. Now, there is and real attempt, isn't it? Don't you see it? The device of the devil to just get us into a stalemate or into a state of no progress. You can't imagine that. You know, my dear friends, I have been characterized by a deep sense of impatience. I don't commend that virtue to you, but I get impatient over lack of progress. If there is no onward thrust, Oh, it gets me into a, a real state of, what shall I say, unrest. I find rest in advance. I find joy in spiritual warfare. And I feel that the Christian life is designed for that. That is the norm. You see, the best form of offense is the, the best form of defense is offense. How many of you know that? I don't know. How can you you see, when somebody is trying to advance against you and your counterattack is such that you're like an army advancing. Now, any attempt to 
to overthrow you is going to peter out because you're in the full thrust of a full-fledged advance now that is the christian life it is a life of advance you know in every stage of life there are lessons to learn and i want to tell you if you are no team player you are not a christian i fear you know christians are just automatically team players and if one team member fails in a crucial game what happened one key member you're counting on him well i don't know whether i am talking to people who have ever played games seriously there is something you know i am i am very disappointed with sports today this is an aside but because sports and games today are full of cheating and unsportsman like behavior you know the beautiful thing about sport is you clap for your opponent when he has made a move which outwits you you say boy this fellow can make circles around me <laughs> i thought i was some player but here is somebody who will put me in my place you applaud that excellence in others now i don't see that very much amongst christians i don't understand this at all they don't know that they are in a war they don't know that they have to depend upon their flank you see if you are outflanked from the sides what happens you have to keep somebody who knows how to defend your spearhead your spearheading and the force is advancing and your flanks are exposed what happens any enemy can just cut through your flank and separate your advance from the base the supply you are defeated you are cut off so some people like to be cut off that way because they are so impractical they know nothing about christian warfare they don't want to advance and they are not disappointed that they are stymied that their advance is just doesn't take place what do you do with such people you must show them the door you must show them the door and tell them listen you'd better get your moorings right you better repent and because you have not repented deeply you do not know how to amend you don't know how to advance you don't know the elementary steps of denying yourself taking up the cross daily and 
following the master. So I find that uh, many Christians are uh, just a disorganized rabble. They don't know what is warfare. They're not prepared to make any sacrifices. And they talk about being Christian soldiers. And they will sing at the top of their voices. Onward, Christian soldiers. There can be nothing going for onwards with people like that. If it is one step onward, it will be ten steps backward. So, my dear friends, now here we shall begin at Second Timothy, second chapter, and the fourth words. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. You know, friends, I believe that a Christian testimony requires that a man should pay his bills on time. And uh, this business of people defaulting is a serious hindrance to the gospel. You know, people say, hey, we built this beautiful structure. What do you think of my church? <laughs> we owe the bank just one and a half million. What do you owe the bank? So much? And then, what is, what is your thrust then? Get the money. You know, as a matter of fact, one pastor told me in Indiana, a very godly brother whom I loved very much, he said, the church is voting me out because they feel I can't raise the funds. So they wanted a fundraiser, not a preacher of God's word. Huh? They wanted some kind of guy who would just focus on money. And after all, that's the least thing that you can think of when you stand in the pulpit. It's the eternal souls of men. Souls that are going to be lost eternally. Good church people who warm the seats on Sundays and who have had the unfortunate experience of sitting under your preaching. You know, it is not, it is not any longer something which has eternity in view. You know, when you take eternity out of your thinking, you're finished. I can tell you that. You have taken eternity out of your thinking. You have put such a low ceiling upon your life. 
all the time your head will keep banging against the ceiling see now what is the outlook today the outlook today is not an in look the outlook today is not an upward look the outlook today is not the uh, white and harvest fields the outlook today is my wallet my wallet is my outlook Can you think of a person whose whole outlook is the wallet? What do you mean? Where are you going? Are you going where that wallet will buy anything? Where are you going? You're going where that wallet is irrelevant. And you make that wallet the centerpiece of your life. What happens to you? you're finished i can tell you that i can give it to you in writing now displacing jesus by the wallet does it make any sense displacing the word of god by worldly values you see now what is a wallet it's a worldly value and worldly values are so dominant they are tyrannical they terrorize you that they will turn you into a blood pressure patient they will turn you into a living corpse that's it worldly values and now my dear friends one thing i had learned and i had seen it in practice and i knew that it works seek you first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you now therefore am i going ever going to be the ultimate provider do you think that station that is given to me to perform impossible i can never be the ultimate provider i don't have to go and consult somebody and say how can i be the ultimate provider no you know that's where faith is so central faith when you obey god's word you're acting by faith god says don't get entangled with all the rubbish around you don't go into sc- scrounging in the garbage heap all right when you obey the lord what are you doing 
Oh, you're conserving in every way possible. You conserve your health, you conserve your vitality, you conserve your thinking, your con you conserve your time, you conserve your money. Simply by obeying God's word and making Jesus the centerpiece. You put the ultimate provider in his place and you have taken the back seat and say, come on. I certainly hope you will be able to say you are the better driver. <laughs> We can be so foolish, you know. We think, oh no, I'm the better driver. Huh? You take the back seat while I take the wheel. No, my dear friends. So, what is creating a stalemate? Why this entanglement? Why this feeling of being choked. You know, folks, it's a terrible feeling a man must be when a person feels he is getting asphyxiated or being choked. You know, one or two people have told me how when their husbands tried to choke them by their throats. They cried out and police, police. Well, sometimes you can't even cry, you know. My dear people, so must we not quickly get out of these entanglements. Yes, we must. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we beseech you. Teach us, Father, teach us, we pray, how to be obedient to the light which you give to us. Save us from this modern superficiality, this thin veneer that is so misleading. All this kind of smoke screen cannot hide the fact that we are not performing. Lord, in this battle, you have promised to make us more than conquerors. And here we find ourselves sulking and cringing and moaning and licking our little wounds. Oh, save us, Lord, from this attitude of defeatism. Deliver us, we beseech you. This blood-bought people may be a conquering people. Hear our prayer that the world may not be given any opportunity to try to bully us. And we may get out of that habit of being bullied by the world. Please, Father, hear our prayer. In Jesus' holy name, amen.